and welcome to another installment of the M&A Talk where I speak to Nick Pilly at businessesforsale.com about mergers and acquisitions for the small and medium-sized enterprise. Hi, Nick. How are you? Great, Marcus. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, very good. Um, I'm going to dive straight into it. Um, in, in a previous conversation, you mentioned a business valuation had gone down from 16 million to 13 million based on a quality of earnings report. What What is a quality of earnings report? How does that work? So basically, a quality of earnings report is really a, it's more of a forensic accounting process. Typically, uh, if you're purchasing a larger business, you know, usually, you know, more than sort of $5 million or more in value, you know, uh, you as that buyer would want to appoint either your current accountant or a team of, of sort of forensic accountants to actually create what they call a quality of earnings report, where they'll go to that business, they'll spend a few days, they'll obviously look at all financial uh, audited accounts, records, receipts, bank statements, incomings, outgoings, and really sort of present you a, a, a very um, accurate picture, not only of sort of, you know, what the business has done historically, but but more accurately of where it's trending to in the future. They would also look at other sort of um, market influences as well. And, you know, to see sort of whether that business, uh, you know, valuation is, is currently accurate based on obviously what you've agreed to pay for that in your letter of intent. This particular business that I mentioned previously is a building business and they focus on roofing material, uh, specifically wood trusses for, for roofing. So uh, what they did, obviously, they looked at the market in Canada for the building industry. And unfortunately, there has been obviously a, a downward trend in the building industry over the last one to two years. Not to say that the you know the previous forty six years that the business you know has been trading has been very positive and trending you know in the upward direction, but did take a slight dip in the last two years. Which unfortunately, then the recommendation from the quality of earnings report was to say that look you know the business actually you know, maybe it's not worth 16 and a half, but perhaps a more accurate reflection is, is around that sort of 13 and a half, 14 million, which the buyers and sellers have now actually come to for that business. So it's kind of like in the UK property market, it's like a survey, isn't it? Um, 100%, yeah. And the, mm -hmm. and and I guess they're making such a in-depth sort of case for it that it does bring in the owner's sort of agreement with the process. Otherwise, they wouldn't proceed forward with a lower price. Yes. Well, I think it's confidence, right? In, in some cases, quality of earnings report can actually, you know, show to the buyer that they're getting a good deal. But when the seller looks at that report, they say, well, hold on a minute. The business might be worth an extra couple of million. So it does work both ways, obviously, from, from that side of things. Very interesting, Nick. And um, I'm interested in why more people don't do it, even at the lower lower end. And I, and, and is it expense? Is it, I mean, are these an expensive yeah. thing to do? Typically, yeah. I, I think you know, in this particular instance, that the, the quality of earnings report, you know, cost over fifty thousand uh, Canadian for this particular business. But you know, if you're if you're looking to spend, you know, sixteen and a half million dollars on a business to obviously then spend the fifty thousand up front to help you validate that and give you that peace of mind. I think it's obviously well worth it. And, and a lot of the banks, obviously, if you're borrowing, uh, you know, a chunk of change in order to obviously acquire that particular business, banks will insist upon a quality of earnings report in order to release, you know, necessary funds for you. And that's done either through the lawyer or the CPA or what we say in the UK, the accountant. Correct. Brilliant. Thank yeah. you, Nick. As always, I love our quick dive in m a chats uh helping to educate small and medium-sized business owners or prospective entrepreneurs when making an acquisition around the terms and the way that the whole buying and selling process works nick once again thank you very much for the this these insights and we'll speak again next week thank you marcus take care bye-bye bye nick bye. Bye,